Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President and Chief Operating Officer, Jim McGeever. Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, very, very happy to be here. Welcome to Sweet World. This is new for us. We're changing up the format a little bit, as many of you know. Uh, we're doing these industry keynote sessions today instead of, uh, usually we do Evan's session on day two. So we squeezed everything into day one, which I'm sure you may have all noticed for the major, key, major keynotes. But, so today in this room, it's wholesale distribution manufacturing. You'll be pleased to know that of the five industry keynotes, there is more revenue for NetSuite represented in this vertical, in this room, than in any other industry keynote. Wow. <laughs> so this is a very, very, very important industry to us. So in all fairness, software is our number one by revenue, but just right behind it, really close, is wholesale distribution. Uh, manufacturing is about the same size, which was a more recent one for us. It's about the same size as our retail and services business, but to combine this room, far bigger than any of the other verticals that we'll be talking about today. And one of the reasons for that is, certainly wholesale distribution was the very first vertical that NetSuite ever focused on. So this goes all the way back to 2002. So in 2002, way before we had an industry or vertical strategy, and we were looking at how to grow our business, we tried to find a types of businesses that would use all parts of the suite, that would use most of the suites, that would take advantage of us being online. And when we did the analysis and we all sat down, we actually came up with wholesale distribution. You know, it was a large marketplace, lots of features, lots of people were distributed where they were. So it was an ideal opportunity for us. So that's when we first started building out WD type features. And then manufacturing came along a number of years later, and that really came about because distributors actually started building stuff. We used to call them light manufacturers in the early days, and, but they were really complex distributors. And that really then kickstart our manufacturing strategy. So this has been a huge, huge uh, engine of growth for NetSuite. And the largest number of customers by far um, are in uh, this vertical. So you've seen this enough now. I'm not going to talk to it. But yes, we have some forward-looking statements somewhere in here. OK, so as I talked about, one of the great things about uh, this, these industry groups is they were some of the first companies that started with NetSuite. So when NetSuite was small, a lot of the companies were small, a lot of them have really grown with us. So we dealt with companies, uh, GoPro is a good example. When they first came to NetSuite, they had less than 10 employees and were operating in a single entity um, and had just a few million in revenue. Now they're uh, north of a billion dollars in revenue, global, complex, distribution, manufacturing, retail, uh, websites, everything. And so that's a great example of a company that grew with us. The other thing that we did in the early days is as we started getting a lot of feature requests or people asked us to do this or asked to do that, we built this platform. And it started off really easy. You were able to add custom fields, and then almost immediately after that, custom records, and then we had a sweet script. And so we built this amazing agility into it. And the, as you've seen, that platform has just gotten better and better and better over the years. So having an agile solution means you know, rarely having to say no. Now, sometimes you should say no. Not everything's an ideal platform solution. But we've got this phenomenal platform to customize it to a lot of the unique business models that we have in this room. And then we started adding deep functionality. And so once we kind of had this broad-based horizontal functionality, both in WD and manufacturing, then we started to go really deep. You know, we recently purchased Icuity, which is really within the shop floor, uh, within the four walls on the manufacturing. But we've actually um, changed how we do development and in terms of how we create our focus areas. So for years, what we used to do, we had all these industries, we had all these requests, we would hire our development and we would spread it across many different, different initiatives from commerce to retail, services, et cetera. So we've kind of changed the model a little bit. It's that instead of spreading it across multiple initiatives, we're making bigger bets on certain initiatives. And one of the big bets we're making on is on supply chain. So when we took our hiring this year, about a third of the development hires went into this initiative that we are calling SCOPE. And SCOPE stands for Supply Chain Operational Excellence. So we are making a big, big bet 
on incremental supply chain features. And what's different with this approach as well is, you know, and large, you know, a lot of the features are focused on outsourced manufacturing, but what they're also doing is we're working with our customers, some of the long-term customers, some new customers, and we actually have what we call design partners. And we are together, meet monthly, and we define the problem and come up with solutions together and do it all in the way that we think is the best way to solve this similar problem. So there is a huge bet going on inside of NetSuite right now. 2016 is really the year of ramping up these resources, hiring them, getting them ramped, getting them trained. You're going to start seeing a lot coming out, a massive acceleration of features in supply chain coming out next year. Then global, 2008, we launched One World. This allowed some of these companies, like I mentioned, GoPro went global. I think you're going to hear from Sev1, who went global almost overnight through a, a contract they won. And uh, Groupon, another great example of a company uh, a few years ago, they, um, which actually have inventory that they sell these days, they went global. We had to go, roll them out to 50 countries in 50 weeks. American Express, we, again, another 50 countries they operated in, we did that in nine months. So our businesses, even some of our small businesses, went global very early on. And then as we started acquiring, they had this functionality, had this global, we had to find new ways of working with customers. And so one of the things that we added was um, the, the e-commerce section. I'll talk a little bit about it in this section. And then we really have to, and all this enablement and training that went with all this then made us the number one cloud ERP solution. So the good news is you pick the fastest growing ERP solution on the planet. No one's even close. So we do have this huge lead in customers. So there are literally thousands. The, the largest number of customers is in this room as well. So the, the more count of customers work with NetSuite in wholesale distribution and manufacturing than any other of the industry keynotes. We've added over 650 in the last year alone. You're going to hear from a lot of them today. I think we have seven uh, companies you're going to hear from today that have been through this journey together with us. And so we're very excited about uh, companies like S1 and Shore Carpets. You know, you're going to hear from all of them today about how they've worked on this journey with NetSuite. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the initiatives that we're going through right now. But here's one, and this is the only industry keynote year that we're going to talk about this today. We talked about this a lot at the partner conference. We have this new initiative at NetSuite, and it's really to do with an entire customer engagement model. And it's what we're calling Zero to Cloud in 100 Days. It has its name, but it's a name that I am not allowed to speak because we haven't formally announced it yet. But what we're doing is we're changing the method by which we sell, by which we implement, and by which we support our customers. The first vertical we rolled this out to was wholesale distribution. So, if you go, and it's on our website, we started doing this, we piloted this in October, and now, effective January 1st, and now we've also added our emerging companies, all wholesale distribution deals go through this now, this new method of uh, selling and implementing. And what it is, it's really a leading practices alignment phase where we align with you on what we think the best practices are. So we have these accounts that are pre-configured with thousands of hours of configuration built in already. All the KPIs, all the use cases, the customers to sell up. We've also added uh, commerce to this as well. And so we're getting customers live in 100 days or less. And they're not just getting live in 100 days or less, they're getting a solution that is far more suited, far more configured to a wholesale distributor than they ever would have gotten in the past in terms of a traditional implementation approach. So they're getting more, they're paying less, and they're getting it quicker. And the customers who've been through this have had phenomenal success. So there's one company called Lindemann Chimney, they're, they did a session yesterday. Um, they went live on two phases of the implementation, ERP and website. ERP took 45 days, the website took 30 days. They took a, little, they took a month off for Christmas for some reason. Um, but overall, that project was 75 days. So, and they, you know, with phenomenal success. So you're gonna be hearing a lot more about this. And if you're an existing customer, 
All these assets, all these best practices are available to you. All the KPIs and the dashboards are available as a bundle, so you can talk to your account manager and see whether it's right for you. You can have a look at this account and see if that version, may be, that implementation, that configuration may be right for you. Uh, but it is something I'm very, very excited about. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the initiatives we're working on. So, we continue to invest in the platform. This agility, making this platform easier to use, uh, making the features better, making the performance better, these are a big, big investment. It's been one of the core secrets to our success. And we're gonna to continue to invest in the platform. It is one of the biggest development teams we have. As I mentioned, with Scope, you're gonna get a lot of industry-specific functionality. And one of the things that Evan talked about was um, this Ravi approach where we really pick very specific verticals within these industries. So in retail, we picked retail apparel and we started building all these very specific features for them. Turns out about 90% of everything we built for them bled over to other retail customers. And we're gonna do the same thing within this industry group as well. And you know, really go deep on certain verticals. Global, you heard me talk about One World. It's our crown jewels. It's over half our revenue comes from One World accounts. In fact, our pre-configuration of our WD accounts is actually a One World account. We actually provision it as a One World account. Even if you only have one subsidiary, we provision it as a single subsidiary within a One World account. So the second you go global, the second you add another subsidiary, it's an incredibly simple and easy process to do. So that's another one of our big bets is continuing to go global with our global ERP. The other um, big initiative, and you'll see some of this today, is our commerce presence within this industry. There is more, this, I, this one I always love, more customers in WD manufacturing use our commerce than they do in our retail. Over half of you use our commerce. So if you're one of the half that not, you may want to ask yourself why. We have an amazing solution in commerce for B2B. It's, it's unique, because we've got all the data, all the pricing, we know what they've ordered in the past. We have these fantastic B2B portals, and then you can also have a B2C as well. So if you want to sell direct to consumer, as well as sell through uh, channels, uh, we have a phenomenal solution. So if you're not using that, you should really take a serious look. And then we also talked yesterday about business model innovation, which absolutely applies here, and you're gonna hear a lot more about this today, uh, as we put these hybrid business models where we add services, and we add product, and we add sub subscriptions, all combined within a single account, and all being able to be recognized with a single account. So, with that, I, I now get to hand over to uh, the people who are gonna put some meat on this and show you actual demos and examples of what we're talking about. But I'd now like to introduce Paul Fowle, uh, SVP of Product Marketing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Jim. Well, it, it's great to be here on stage uh, today. It's a bit different from yesterday's stage, the, the big circle. I feel a bit more comfortable, actually. Uh, I mean, hopefully everyone here is going to be a lot more comfortable. I know when I got up yesterday, I, I almost collapsed because my backside had frozen to the seat. So we're going to try and make it, uh, 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 you know, a, a lot more interactive. And what we've done is we've kept this great background uh, down here. So what I'd say is if you're on this side of the hall, if you look over there in about half an hour, someone's going to come out and get changed on that balcony. And over there on, on, on that flat there, someone's gonna go and get changed there. So if I see everyone looking that way, I, I know either I, I'm not doing a good job of uh, keeping your attention or that's happening. But no, and it's an outstanding backdrop here. But uh, I'm very excited today to take you through some of the major initiatives that we're working on in uh, manufacturing and distribution. And as Jim said, this is our, our fastest growing and, and our largest uh, in industry. And uh, we, we've, it's come along so far in the, uh, the last 12 months in the types of things that we've done. So there's a, the first area I'm gonna discuss is I'm gonna discuss really the platform. And the platform is key. And in a lot of customers here, it's the platform that got people onto the product in the first place. Because a, a true cloud platform delivers the agility that a modern company needs. And that is, it's always on. 
It's available 24-7, 365 days a year. It doesn't go down at, you know, at midnight for four hours while a backup gets, takes place or, or a, a process gets run or while MRP is running, no one else can do anything, et cetera, or it goes down for a week as we try and upgrade for the 12th time to the latest version. It's always on. It's always available. It's agile. So if a new opportunity comes about or there's a requirement to go and analyze information, you can do that quickly and easily. The platform supports what you need to do. It's, uh, it's global, so you can get access to it anywhere from any type of device, whether it be a, a browser, whether it be a, a mobile device, etc. And it's always up to date. You always have the latest features and functions. You don't wait until a business opportunity comes along and say, oh, now I need to work out how to do X. Okay, now we need to work out how to get the, the, the product upgraded. The solution, an agile platform ensures you have a solution that is always up to date and doesn't get in the way of you running your business. It supports all your business goals and what you want to do. So if we look at the platform itself and really the key things that it's delivering, one is really the operational side. And the operational side is that, as I said, it's always on. It's scalable and elastic. As you grow, the platform grows. I mean, one of the uh, real unique things about NetSuite is we truly have customers who are a handful of employees, a handful of users that grow to customers of thousands of users. Everyone's always talked about that, but NetSuite has truly done that. If you look at NetSuite itself, after the, uh, the first two years of the, the company's existence, when they then moved off QuickBooks, as soon as the first version of the product came into existence, they went onto the NetSuite platform. And it's exactly the same instance that's running a massively global organization today. That is true scalability and true elasticity that the platform delivers. The other area is security, knowing that it's completely secure what you're doing. So uh, I, one of the number one issues that people have moving to the cloud platform is security, but the reality is, unless you're the largest of businesses, there's no way you're gonna have as many people that all they do every single day is think about security and making sure that the data is secure and the product is secure, but still accessible simply and easily. So that's key. It always being up to date and it being compliant with all the standards that, that are out there. The other area is flexibility, delivering personalization so that end users can really optimize their environment. And then uh, all the way through to mass customization where people can build huge modules or huge extra capabilities on the platform, supporting that complete spectrum so that you just don't have to think about you and how you can uh, uh, utilize the, the product or rely just on NetSuite to utilize the product. The flexible platform that NetSuite has ensures that there is a massive ecosystem of partners who are available to assist you to, to deliver solutions for unique uh, aspects of verticals or to uh, help you implement or to help you customize or personalize. And because the platform's so open, it supports all of that. So uh, again, uh, with our partners and our partner products, it's not like your father or your grandfather's partner product. That when you, uh, you, know, when you said, okay, I, I'd like to use this product from this partner over here, they say, well, what version are you on? What service pack are you on? Okay, you're on that one, all right, then we, we can work with that. And then when you need to upgrade it, it's, well, we only work with this latest version over here. We need to go and get that upgrade. And you get to this mess. So it, as soon as you have partner uh, products, you have this bird's nest of issues that you get stuck on a particular release. With NetSuite, there's only one version. So when a partner plugs into NetSuite, there's only one version to, to plug into. It always works. When the product upgrades, the partner product is already there. It's already upgraded. So it's good for the partners and so far, as soon as they plug into the NetSuite product, they have access to all of NetSuite's customers, not a finite amount who just happen to be on the latest release and the latest service pack. And the same with our customers. You get access to this huge uh, uh, opportunity of, uh, of uh, uh, solutions and, and uh, capabilities out there. And then finally, it's all about the usability. 
you know, providing capabilities where people can optimize what they're doing, that they don't have to rely on just what comes out of the box. This is how you're going to look at your pipeline. This is how you're going to go and analyze orders. This is how we look at this particular, you know, uh, handle uh, credit issues. You can on the, people can personalize what they want to see the way they do with all the consumer products that they purchase. And I have really two real life examples that, that I've uh, found myself with the NetSuite platform. Uh, when I first joined, uh, a few weeks after first joining the company, and I'm not sure who's in the room, and, uh, they probably don't want to hear this, but I left my PC on the plane, my NetSuite PC. Now, uh, it probably, in, in a real lean world for the manufacturers out there, it really probably only took 15 minutes uh, for me to get my PC back, but because of Delta and their procedures that once you go through security, you can never get back to the gate, it took four weeks for me to get my PC back. Uh, so that wasn't really a very agile process. But the key thing for me is I didn't miss a step. I could access everything on my cell phone, and as soon as I got home, I just used my own personal PC. For years, people have been talking about bring your own device to work and allowing uh, our users to be enabled. The NetSuite platform does that, and it does it in a completely secure way. The other area that uh, uh, really, I, I think, supports this whole consumerization that the platform allows is expenses. And I apologize to people that sat through a prospect session yesterday when I talked about this. But when I first joined the company, I deliberately did this. I had some expenses. I'd been, I had some foreign currency expenses as well I needed to apply. So I downloaded the, the mobile application. And you know, if you look at the traditional expense process, you go and get your degree in nuclear physics. You enter your expenses. You then get them rejected because you didn't uh, categorize it properly. Then you resubmit them. You get it sent back because you didn't put the thing in the right place on the uh, piece of paper that you submitted with it. And eventually, you give up and you get paid three quarters of what you tried to submit. With the, the NetSuite expense system, I downloaded the application. I, uh, in 15 minutes, I had entered all the multi-currency expenses I submitted and was paid two weeks later. With no training, on any of that expense system. The application took me through. And again, that's what a good platform does. It drives this out to the user so they can optimize their own experience. So uh, the platform is key with NetSuite, and it's something that we continually upgrade, and it's something we continually invest in to give you, our customers, the agility to be able to operate successfully in this marketplace uh, uh, today. So I, I'm not going to dwell too much on this, but we've added a whole lot of fun functionality in the last 12 months into the platform, improving the performance of the platform. And again, that just happens while you sleep. All this happens just while you're working. The platform gets updated, and the performance improves of key areas of the, the aspect uh, of the product. The Sweet Cloud development framework allowing large-scale development management for uh, companies that uh, do that type of thing. The new version of Sweet Script 2.0 delivering real simplicity to development. And what wasn't really stressed yesterday is what that platform does, it allows anyone really with JavaScript experience to be able to immediately start developing on the platform. So again, it opens up a massive uh, uh, opportunity uh, or a massive marketplace of people that can help add value to your application. You're just not relying on NetSuite or uh, your own uh, users to do that. Expanding global capacity, I'll talk about that later. And purposeful APIs, again, this is something else that just slips through. NetSuite is a very open product. There are web services available for absolutely everything, so you can get access to uh, many things. But if you think of something like tax, tax is calculated in six or seven different places. So if you wanted to intercept and do something with tax, you would need to make sure you, uh, you update those six places. But with this, these, the new APIs that are out there, you, you basically plug into one place, and it handles all that complexity that sits behind it. And again, then unified search, and uh, Evan went through that yesterday. And again, that's all about the consumerization, bringing incredible analytical power to the end user in a simple, in a simple way. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, invite up Ron, uh, Ronga uh, Bodla to talk to one of our customers and see how they've used the platform success. Just for NetSuite itself, we've rebranded Ronga, Ronga Bodla. That's how I try to get bold in, to see that? We, we, as Evan suggested, we needed that drum to do the ch, -ch so to make sure everyone got it. Anyway, thank you, thank Ronga, you, thank you. So at this point, I'd like to in invite uh, John Lane from S1 uh, to join me up on stage. Thank you, John.
Sure, thank you. You're a great example of, uh, of the flexibility of the platform and what you can do. Can you talk a little bit about uh, S1 and what you guys are doing? Sure. Uh, we're a global brand licensing distribution company in the digital printing industry. And we are exclusive owners of brands like Hewlett Packard, Kodak, LexJet, Fredericks, and tens of thousands of customers around the globe servicing 80 countries through 23 subsidiaries, 17 distribution centers. And uh, that all happened within a very short period of time, and, and NetSuite was you know, there for us to be able to do it. What's the, what's the real value that NetSuite the NetSuite platform provides to you. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, the real value started a, a few years ago when uh, Hewlett Packard decided to award us the exclusive licensing agreement in our space. And one of the requirements of that was we had to go global. And we were just a one location company in the United States. So we had to open up multiple offices, hire and train people, open up distribution centers around the globe. And we had to do that in nine months. So, I mean, that's you know, the initial real value for us was doubling the size of our company in basically a couple of days, you know, and now we have that capability to do that over and over and over again. So that's valuable for us. And were you guys able that. to do that in nine months? And we go pulled it off. All those countries yep. Absolutely. Yep. We swallowed the business and uh, NetSuite has helped us get stable. So we've become fully stable in the past 18 months and now we're, we're scalable and we weren't scalable before. And you know, kind of the last really big question is, can you, what's the value that the platform provides that you weren't really able to do before? I mean, the scalability is the biggest one. I mean, there are many others. You know, we're connected to our suppliers and our carriers and our warehouse and distribution and you know, credit card processing and e-commerce and internal e-commerce systems and those sorts of things. We couldn't do those before. But the big one's the scalability. I mean, we could go out and swallow hundreds of millions of dollars worth of revenue with little to no investment. I mean, we could do that tomorrow, and that's what we're set up to do. That's, that's the reason we're doing what we're doing, is so we can go swallow more companies and, and uh, continue to leverage the platform. And is that, what's, is that what's next for you guys? Yep, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you, John. I appreciate you uh, joining us up here Absolutely. Stage. Thanks for having us. Paul, if you can... Uh... Hey, thank you, John. You know, I, I, again, a great example of people using the platform, the agility of the platform to grow and, and manage their business. Well, the platform is one thing, but it's really about, you know, providing the, the functionality to run a modern manufacturing or distribution business. The key capabilities that uh, help people optimize their supply chain, uh, reduce cost, concentrate on value, those types of things. So what we have been doing over the, uh, uh, over the last 12 months and, and before is really adding a huge amount of capabilities that are all about managing the, order va the value chain. So when we look at the value chain from order capture, CRM, order management, pricing, managing the order, uh, uh, looking at, uh, you know, promising the order, et cetera, the whole supply phase, planning, manufacturing, execution, distribution, planning, all those types of things to the physical shipment, the billing, and then the support of those applications. That's what enterprise solutions have been trying to do for many, many years. And again, NetSuite uh, uh, delivers a huge amount of our functionality, enabling our customers to really collapse that cycle time, bring value quicker to, our, uh, 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 to your, your customers, and allow you to concentrate on uh, those value-added tasks so that you know, we drive more revenue, more profitability, more quickly. So uh, NetSuite has, as I said, have spent a, a, a huge in, a, amount of money in, in producing that industry-specific functionality that is gonna deliver that. So that customers can go in and solve those problems of disparate systems, poor you know, inventory uh, accuracy, traceability uh, issues, getting rid of labor-intensive processes, so automating those, so again, we can add more value, getting rid of process errors, inefficiencies, poor utilization of resources, and managing high volumes quickly and easily, being able to grow and shrink as the demand uh, dictates. So across the entire suite of the, the application, both in manufacturing and distribution, we've recently added a huge slew of uh, capabilities. So if we look at manufacturing, the whole execution side, the MES side, 
barcode scanning, the tablet experience, making sure that the shop floor can immediately communicate what they're doing, make sure they're doing the right thing at the right time, handle exceptions, that type of thing. Advanced routings, a lot more sophistication in the routing and defining the resource requirements, machine requirements, tool requirements, et cetera, that are needed, that then drives the rough cut capacity planning and the, and the, and the, the detail finite capacity planning on the shop floor. All these capabilities have been added with our advanced manufacturing capability. Proof quality management and control, and a whole uh, new uh, suite of products taking us into the recipe batch control part of the, the marketplace. And I know we have a number of customers who utilize that very effectively today. Dynamic reporting and release management so that planners and uh, executors can determine what's right to release at the appropriate work cell at the, the right time. And then going across to the distribution side. So when we need to distribute that product or supply that product that's been either manufactured or sourced, you know, wireless RF mobile, advanced wave management, system directed put, uh, pick and put away, uh, the uh, uh, dynamic forward pick replenish with cycle counting, FIFO and uh, FIFO uh, allocation of inventory, the uh, whole RFQ process, blanket uh, POs, a whole range of solutions that are there to help our product companies, our manufacturers and distributors optimize their, their capabilities out of the box, advanced uh, tools and technologies. Now, it's just not a case of providing the functionality. Jim mentioned this at the beginning, in zero to cloud in 100 days. What we're all about doing within NetSuite is ensuring our customers can take advantage of these new products. So when they have the problem, how do I solve it? And being able to solve it in easy, bite-sized chunks, not having to engage in a, in a two-year implementation in order just to get RF barcoding or you know, to, uh, uh, you know, to, to run out of capacity when trying to, by the time you get the solution in, the problem has disappeared and a new problems come on board. So really, these stairways and the way in which we structure the technology and allow people to take it on is all about being able to take on the functionality quickly and being able to get that value quickly and do it in a way that is meaningful for you. And it is a stairway that continues on because every year, every six months, we add new features and functionality that we want you to be able to take advantage of. We want you to be able to take advantage of quickly and easily. And again, this is the, the manufacturing stairway. And if we uh, go across as one for uh, distribution as well, that will enable our companies to rapidly implement this advanced technology and deliver uh, advantages to their businesses quickly and easily. So with that, I would like to invite Gavin Davidson you know, he's a real Scot with a real Scottish name up to, the, uh, up to the, uh, the, the podium to take us through a demonstration of this key functionality. Thanks, Gavin. So, uh, very happy to be here this morning. It's going to be an interesting day. Um, I actually get to show you some software, so no more PowerPoints for, for a while, so that's great. Um, and I'm very excited to see so many people in the room. I've been with NetSpeaks for six years. Uh, Rang and I joined about the same time. Uh, when we joined, I think we had 900 employees, and there's over 5,000 now, so we've come a long way in, in that time. I have uh, four demonstrations I'm going to take you through today. Uh, the first one's only 35 minutes, so it should be okay. Uh, small joke. Um, so let's uh, take a look at the video, and uh, we'll have a look at some of the new functionality that we have around uh, manufacturing, advanced manufacturing and advanced uh, warehouse management. So we've talked about all the investments we've, we've made, and uh, there's a lot of depth there in the, in the manufacturing functionality, and that's evidenced just in the admin area. So if you look at the, all the different things you can, you can set up and the parameters you can set, there's lots of things you have to control and lots of options you have. I'm going to do four parts of the demo today. We're going to talk about capacity planning, so rough cut capacity planning and how you define that and control that within your environment. Uh, my personal favorite, scheduling. So there's uh, now some finite scheduling algorithms that you can use to go and make sure your work orders are, are completed on time. Um, one of the other areas we're going to look at as well, of course, would be, uh, would be quality. So you have, your, you have your capacity plan, then you have your actual, your actual schedule. Your schedule tells you when you're going to start and finish. Of course, uh, if you don't have good quality and you're, and you're scrapping products, then that's going to affect the finish date as well. So uh, we now have the ability to go and set up inspection plans and track that. 
The most important thing though is how do you get that data into the system? And so we now have a tablet-based data entry system that we're going to use and show you how that, how that works as well. So the first thing we're going to do is just, uh, just for some background, we're using, um, as we talked about how we're now getting into some process and batch environments, uh, the item we're going to use today is a cream product. So we can uh, talk about some of the batching capabilities and, and that sort of thing. This is the regular item record. This, this is all um, functionality that came from the, the acquisition of, of uh, Acuity. You can see we're using the regular item record. But what they've done is they've extended the functionality so that there's a lot more depth within, uh, within the, the product now. So we're, right now we're looking at the workbench. The workbench is basically where you have the operations defined that you're going to perform uh, when you're doing this. And when you get into that, the first thing that you may want to look at is how you can have more detailed work instructions. So for, for your operator, they can have a detailed list, uh, list of instructions that they have to, uh, or whatever they have to perform, the, the tasks that they have to do. You can then, of course, go and define what, your, what inspection has to, be, has to be done. So in this case, for this uh, particular operation, there are four inspections that have to be performed. You can see that there's different types of inspections you can do. You can say, is it mandatory or not? Uh, you can also enforce, is there an electronic signature? So they have someone who has to sign off, they've actually done the inspection. Um, there can be sampling sizes and some other parameters that you might want to go and, uh, and do as well. Back at the planning tab, this is where you go and set some of the other parameters that tells you uh, exactly how, how this item is going to be scheduled and planned in the system. There's setup times, uh, run times. Uh, there's the, here's the batch criteria, so if you have um, a product you're making it in batch, certain batch sizes, you can, you can determine the maximum size of the batch. Next, we will automatically go and break down the work order into the appropriate batch sizes. The assets then let you add some additional uh, elements of control to scheduling. Right? So you can, you can set up all those different assets, and then you can also go and uh, set up the actual operators or the people that are required to perform the test. So we have machines, we have people, um, and then the first thing you might do then is go and set up your capacity plan. So your capacity plan is, can be set up in a number of ways. Uh, in this case, it's using planned orders. It can also be based on sales orders or your demand plan. So you can run your demand plan. It's then going to go and look at the, all the routing capabilities we've set up, and it's going to tell you exactly how much uh, machine time and labor time you need to go and satisfy uh, the, the forecast that you have or, or the demand plan that you have. So there's, the result of that then is you might have your, uh, those different planning reports. They show you uh, by work center, um, how many units you have planned, what the utilization is as well, how much labor is being planned for it as well. So we're also breaking it down into labor and machine time. Um, and so there's lots of ways you can go and then go view that, the, uh, how the capacity is going to be consumed. And this is just a high level view so you can figure out what your, your planning requirements are and what your staffing requirements are. So now we have all our work orders created, and so you end up with a list of the work orders on the left-hand side. You can see that there is a color-coded uh, list as well, showing you um, how, what the status of the work orders are. I like this view. So this is the calendar view. It shows you by day exactly which work orders are scheduled to be performed. It's showing you the, the planned hours and how many are still available. It shows you there's a little icon for each work order as well, so you can see which ones, uh, which work orders may be in trouble. If you're at 100% utilization, that's always a little bit scary, so that's why there's an exclamation mark there. And this is really where you go to, make, to, to have a look at the, uh, the actual scheduling. So this is a real-time scheduling engine. No more of that going and running a global schedule and waiting to see what happens, uh, when, uh, for, what happens to it. As soon as you save the work order, it goes and, and runs through all the, all the scheduling parameters and make sure your work order is going to be scheduled to, to uh, happen at a time when you, it can actually be worked on and when you have the right people and resources available to do it as well. So as a result of that, of course, you now have your dispatch list. This is what you might go and use to tell your, uh, your people in, in the floor what to go and work on. Uh, and the color, there's color coding, of course, using uh, just to show you what the status is of each, of each work order. So let's go and have a look at the actual work orders. So again, native NetSuite work order. You can see in the, the bottom of the, the screen here, there's a, it shows you some of the items that are going to be consumed uh, as part of that. Um, and then if you look at the operations tab, this is the, the regular uh, NetSuite routing, not routing operation, that was for Paul. Um, 
and then you have your detailed production data, right? So now we're building off that and we're saying, uh, these, these are the, 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 the different things that have to happen. Um, and then you have your downtime. So as you record downtime from production, it's showing you exactly uh, what, the, what the case was and uh, what the problem was, uh, how long it took. And the right hand side, there's a downtime reason as well. And then there's, there's also a, a count that you can use for, the, uh, for how long the individual operation was down for. On top of that, of course, more importantly maybe is the actual production results. So when you actually manage to make product and your machine is not down, uh, you can go and see uh, exactly the, all of the operations that were performed, how many you made, what the operation was, uh, which work center it was performed on. And then you can also go and of course track the labor. So you get your machine time, you get your labor time, and all this is back on, on the work order. This is just highlighting now this from a scheduling standpoint. So when you, uh, when you create your work order or you go and edit your work order, it's going to go check real time to make sure that the schedule is still valid. And then, of course, at the end of the day, you can go and publish all this information out to, uh, to a saved search or a chart that you can then go and embed in your dashboard. So when you log in to NetSuite in the morning uh, or you look at it in your mobile phone, you can see exactly what the, uh, what, what the, the issues are and what areas you might want to go and look at too. From a quality inspection standpoint, then of course you can go and see on that particular work order uh, all of the inspections that have been performed. It shows you the, uh, the parameters of the, of the inspection in the top of the screen there. In the bottom it shows you the actual results of it as well. Uh, and you can see who, who performed it. And it shows you the, 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 uh, how many were tested and how many passed, failed, etc. as well. So lots of detail behind, behind the, the process if you want, want to get to that as well. My personal favorite, this is our new tablet data entry system. So you can now uh, use an iPad or any tablet device in production. Uh, and the idea here is that there's big buttons, so you can easily go into and click start. So we're in an operation. Uh, as soon as you go and say you're started, you can then go and uh, record how many you completed. Uh, again, we're using the mouse. This could be a touchpad, updates real time as to how many were, were produced. Let's go make another five, excellent being very productive this morning. Um, then of course, something always goes sideways in manufacturing, manufacturing operations. So uh, you then have the ability to go and record scrap. So you can go and scrap some as well. Again, all easy to use, use buttons you can go and, and type with. And then it shows you in the, in the uh, 1.5 units were actually scrapped. So there's always updating the quantities. And then if something happens with downtime, you go and click on the button, it changes the color, so you can see if you're looking at your, at your iPads, you can tell from the color coding that something's going on in production. You click it again to take it off, and it just gives you a summary of how, many, of how long it was actually down for. This all feel, feeds back real time to the work order. So as soon as you go back to the work order, you can actually go and have a look at the, uh, the downtime that was recorded, uh, or, the, uh, or, or the, the production results as well. So everything's real time. Here's your production data. Scroll down to the bottom, you look at the, uh, the downtime that's recorded and you can sort the descending order. There's the uh, filter head jam that we had for one minute there. And then there's the other quantities that I actually went and produced as well. Everything's real time, we're not batching anything and, uh, and this is really key to making sure that your manufacturing operation uh, continues the way that you might want it to. So we made the product. Let's go and have a look at some of the advanced WMS functionality now. So, we have the product in stock, um, and so we're going to go and use the uh, advanced WMS wave picking functionality to go and, and choose which orders we're we want to go and ship. So this is the control screen where you go and, and set different parameters that, that helps you uh, define which items you want to go and wave pick. It then goes and shows you uh, a list of all those things. So you can go and do wave selection by order. It could be, be by item. It could be by, by customer or zone. Uh, and then that goes and generates a wave. You go through a quick confirmation screen to, to make sure that everything that's on here is what you actually wanted to, to ship in the first place. You can print off the, uh, if you have a, a, a wave pick list as well, you can print that off as well and, and issue that out to, to the pickers. So there's your pick report. Uh, all the barcodes, of course, are, are built in. And then what you can do is you can switch to our uh, handheld device. So now we can go and say, okay, great, I'm gonna go to order picking, I'm gonna scan in my wave number that I have from my, from my list. 
that's just going to go and make sure that then that the that you know exactly what you're meant to be what you're meant to be picking, so it can tell you if you're picking the wrong the wrong item, and so that you can just basically go and scan in again your item um, from the uh, from you typically do this from the barcode, of course. Uh, so you scan in the item, um, and then it's going to just do a confirmation on on the carton you might be putting in, etc., as well. So you can go and do that. In this case, we're actually going to go and stage the components for, for shipping as well. So now we're saying go to staging. It's showing you where to go and stage the, the, the inventory app before you actually go and ship it. It's got the carton number. You enter the stage number. And now you can go and, uh, and complete the operation there too. So we have everything picked. Now we're going to go and use our uh, quick ship process. That is an easy way to go and, uh, and actually do the, the, the shipping from the staging area. Again, a number of ways you can go and do this. We're just making, picking up this, uh, this individual order in this case. And so we're going to go and select the item that we actually want to go and, and do the quick ship for. We can easily go and, and uh, have it default the weight from the system, or you can, you can uh, enter the weight. The weight can, be, can also be pulled in uh, directly from a scale if you want to do that as well. Enter your tracking number. And then when you hit submit, then that should go and, uh, and complete the process. There you go. That was pretty quick and easy. Paul, back to you. So a huge amount of capability added into uh, our manufacturing and our uh, uh, our distribution uh, modules. So definitely take some time, you know, uh, uh, today and tomorrow to look at those capabilities and see how they're going to uh, fit in with the, your, your business. So what I'd like to do now is invite up uh, Ronger again to see a customer uh, doing this in action. Thank you, Ronger. If Dwayne and Tim can join me. So what we wanted to show you now was uh, invite up a customer that's really a great example of leveraging our advanced manufacturing capability. So uh, Dwayne and Tim from uh, Specialty Bakery, thank you very much for joining us. Oh, thank, thank, you. You. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. So you know, Dwayne, maybe you could start and just tell us a little bit about uh, Specialty Bakery, who you guys are, what you guys do. I see some right. cookies here in the background, which make yeah, me a little so, hungry. So a little bit of background, um, Specialty Bakery was formed December 2013 based off of the need in, in our industry that the, the game needed to be changed. Um, so Greenfield build, 225,000 square foot manufacturing facility uh, just outside of the Indianapolis airport. And uh, you know, a, a unique opportunity with, with systems and equipment and all of today's technology, which you know, I'll, I'll let Tim kind of delve into why NetSuite was, was the perfect solution for us in the venture in which we were creating. Tim, yeah, if you can describe a little bit, I mean, you guys, you, when, you, when you were purchasing this manufacturing facility, was there already equipment there? Was there a system? What, what yeah, drove no, you to NetSuite? Uh, okay, yeah, so as uh, Dwayne has just uh, explained there, this was a, a greenfield build, 225,000 square foot, uh, state-of-the-art manufacturing plant. Yeah. Uh, and uh, really the strategy was to be uh, uh, extremely uh, uh, agile, fast to market with the business uh, and, and produce obviously excellent quality product. Uh, we went out uh, looking for uh, an ERP solution uh, and it's quite interesting to be honest. Uh, I hadn't seen the previous presentations uh, but watching those uh, this morning, uh, I can tell you your, your sales strategy is working. We, <laughs> we, we picked the product based on we wanted best practice, we needed to know the depth of functionality was right uh, from a uh, manufacturing perspective. Uh, we had a lot of detailed requirements uh, and uh, we were very happy with what we saw. The cloud-based uh, solution was extremely interesting to us. We hadn't actually had a facility there ready to install. We looked at on-premise, but that was going to be difficult for us. So cloud was really a good solution for us. But we were also a... Uh, 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 strategically looking for uh, rapid, fast expansion. Okay, so we need 
a platform to be able to do that. And, and, and that's what NetSuite has delivered for us, actually. And we've been extremely delighted. I, I, I suppose the, the reason, again, why I, uh, I recognized a lot of the strategy you were coming up there with was that we wanted the best practice. We wanted the core functionality. But us as a business, we, we, we're different. We're making sea changes in the, uh, in the baking world, and we want to be agile. We want to be better than best practices. We want to put our own spin, and uh, the platform and uh, the tool set that we've got, we've, uh, we've really been able to do some very exciting things, and it's been extremely successful for us. And you guys are leveraging NetSuite end-to-end -end in the operations? Oh, complete, yes, yes. So, so yes, yeah, completely. Yeah, no, I mean, from, from raw material coming into the door, inventory management, into staging areas in the production floor to, to shipping distribution, obviously NetSuite Financials. It is, it is you know, my 12 years in the, in the finance world, uh, it's the most end-to-end -end solution I've seen across the board. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we really are using a lot of the things that I think as Gavin just demonstrated. We're, we're fully mobile on the shop floor. Uh, you walk around our plants, it's an extremely clean, very high-tech plant, and NetSuite right. is in the heart of it as well. You mentioned just a second ago that you, you know, one of the reasons that you liked NetSuite was that you had, had this, these capabilities, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you also wanted to be a step above. You wanted yep. to add and have that competitive advantage. So how is, how is NetSuite enabling that competitive advantage for you guys? Okay, for, from, a, if I, if I, from a technology perspective, yeah, absolutely. So we, 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 we're developing new products all the time. We have to be very quick to market. We've got very demanding customer sets that want to uh, try you know, product lifecycle management, trading data and information. And uh, whenever we get new requirements hitting us, then uh, we're finding that we, we don't have to do detailed specifications, send it off to development teams, you know, have all the testing processes and mistakes that are made and go back. We're, we're, we're beating our competition by being able to use the NetSuite tool sets to do things extremely quickly where we have unique uh, requirements. Mm. Anything else you want to add on that? No, I mean, just, just as a follow-up, in, in, in the agility and, and, and how NetSuite to me is, is a better solution is it's very intuitive. It's easy to use. I mean, fundamentally, from, from day one, I've had no technical training on NetSuite. Um, you know, and, and we've been able to, from our implementation, grab the technology, run with it, you know, internally train, and, and we have gone from a staff of... of four people the day before I walked in to eight people to a year and a half later, 160 people and, and no additional costs and, and a very well-versed, very, you know, well, well-trained group of, of folks. And just to kind of summarize, so what, what's next? Is it more, more plants, more, uh, more products, more, uh, more growth? Um, hopefully all of the above. Um, you know, we, we obviously the, the facility was, was built with the intention that we would grow, so so organic growth capabilities with our site in, in Indianapolis. Um, in, in today's world, obviously, acquisition is always a subject. Um, in, in acquisition in, in the form of additional customers as, as well as, as potential new business. So great, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for uh, for joining me up here. Thank you very much. No thank you, Paul. Back to you. That was great. Excellent. Okay, on to the, the next initiative. Well, uh, global uh, is something that comes up uh, all the time, but global ERP is, uh, is, is becoming a, a vital aspect of uh, everyone's business. Uh, today, you know, we're seeing small companies acting global and being able to uh, expand globally, and we're seeing large companies need agility to be able to take advantage of global uh, markets that a lot of the time the systems don't allow. And again, what we want to provide is a solution that doesn't get in the way of business, that moves at the speed of business or faster than the speed of business, so it's always there supporting what you need. Now, the thing is with, uh, with uh, manufacturing and uh, uh, distribution and many other companies, historically, they were very verticalized. So companies would do everything. They'd take in raw materials, they'd carry every single process, and the end product would then ship out. But you know, what we've seen over the years is uh, we've seen companies really focus on where they add value. So again, rather than having that machine that only works for three hours a week to do a very important function, rather than spending all that money on that, what we'll do is we'll outsource that and we'll get someone else to carry out that function. And uh, many times, companies are realizing where their value is is not where they always thought it traditionally was. I always remember years ago listening to the head of Intel 
talk about what Intel did well. You know, and they made chips and, you know, advanced chips that ran, you know, that ran most computers around the world. Uh, but the, he said, you know, their real expertise wasn't uh, producing the best chip that was out there. Their expertise were building factories that could mass produce this very specific product. And that's where their expertise was. Just so happened that they produced chips and they sold millions of them and they, they invested in, uh, uh, in that technology. But their real expertise were in building those specialist factories that could do it. No one else could do that. And again, that's what we're seeing more and more with, uh, uh, with the, within the supply chain, is the supply chain is becoming more global. It's becoming more fractured. It's spreading around the world. And what uh, companies need is they need technologies and tools that allow them to get the same type of control, the same type of management as if it was all within the four walls of their facility. And they controlled everything and they could see everything. So they need tools and technologies that allow them to do that. And we really see a couple of um, uh, key things that are going to help enable that. One is uh, a global infrastructure, so that you'll be, you can open uh, operations or you can uh, open up facilities, whatever you wish. Well, again, the, the business system will support all of that. So as soon as you need to do something, the system has the infrastructure there that's going to enable you to do that. The other area is the global fiscal functionality. There's no use in opening up a facility somewhere, making a particular product and shipping it, etc., and then spending 10 years in jail because you fraudulently uh, 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 didn't allocate the tax correctly. So you need the global, global fiscal functionality that does all of that for you, that ensures that you're compliant no matter where you're doing business. And finally, it's the global supply chain capabilities, managing that disparate supply chain of your sites, your subsidiaries, contract manufacturers, subcontractors, suppliers, consignment stocks, all these other things that happen across a global supply chain for the smallest and the largest of businesses, but where people need that control so they get the same efficiencies they would do if they had it all within the four walls of their business. So NetSuite is doing an awful lot there. You've seen recently our announcements of our global infrastructure, providing new data centers around the world where we're bringing the solution closer to where our customers are ensuring that you know, data protection and other things are viable and available to our customers so again, the product doesn't get in the way. Ensuring that it's easy for our customers to be able to add a subsidiary, add a sales office, add a distribution center, you know, add a manufacturing plant, add a contract manufacturer, adding real business uh, partners into the mix, giving that infrastructure, the platform and the infrastructure available to do all of that. It amazes me how many products that are out there were just handling something as simple as time zone, it cannot be done. You know, because if they have one server somewhere, it's all in the same time zone as the server. Simple things like that that are all available across the, the NetSuite uh, infrastructure. And then the global fiscal side. Jim mentioned One World. It's an incredible platform that really allows our customers to operate in any country around the world. I think it was apart from the Solomon Islands. And it's funny, after that presentation, someone came and said, well, we, we've seen a lot of growth in Fiji. You know, is that one of the countries that you support? And I said, well, if it doesn't, I will personally go and support the product in Fiji. So, um, but across all these countries, having the, the fiscal capabilities that support the business. So when I move stock from warehouse one to warehouse two, and I just do that operation, but they're in two different tax jurisdictions, two different countries, that the sale and the purchase, the tax regime, the ownership, all just happens automatically for me, and it reports up uh, uh, correctly up uh, through the, the system. So that is a huge amount of work. And, and for me, I'm a supply chain guy. So for, to me, it's a huge amount of boring stuff, which uh, I, I don't generally understand. You just want it to happen. And that's what the NetSuite financial infrastructure allows you to do. So all the multis, multi-currency, multi-times, or multi-localization, multi-compliance is all available with One World. And the real exciting one, the supply chain optimization. Jim mentioned it this morning. We talked about it yesterday in Evan's pitch. This really bringing in capabilities for the modern company that really is spending an awful lot of t time on design and innovation and outsourcing a lot of the, the traditional components, the distribution, the manufacturing to contractors, bringing in capabilities, new, do new product introduction, that whole project management and collaborative phase to design new products. The, the PDM enhancements to make sure the right information is spread around to the right business partners at the right time, so real accuracy. Uh, and all the engineering change or in, in advanced bill of material capabilities that are needed to support that. In the planning phase, 
cross subsidiary available to promise, really optimizing your inventory and capacity across the supply chain, whether it be your facilities, whether it be a contractor's facilities, making sure we understand completely what capacity is available, what inventory is available, and the workbenches that will enable our customers to do that. And then quality and traceability, monitoring that across the supply chain inside the four walls and outside the four walls, making sure that our contract manufacturer is meeting the quality standards that we're assigning to the product and assigning the right traceability uh, to it. And then the whole contract management and subcontract management phase, ensuring that I can control that when I ask this contractor to make this product, I'm going to supply these two parts from uh, uh, you know, from Germany that are going to be arrive in uh, China and then China's, the contract manufacturer is going to supply the other three parts, they're going to produce it and they're going to deliver it to Australia uh, at this particular date and time. So managing all of that. And then the end of life, knowing when end of life starts so you can start ramping down that production and getting ready for that new product, uh, a new product that's going to replace it. So there's, supply, so there's some key aspects that the whole collaborative framework that ensures that everyone can speak together and the platform really aids that and makes it easy for us to add those types of capabilities. And a supply chain control tower, so I can quickly and easily go and say, okay, across the globe, what is happening with this part? What's the supply demand profile? Where has it been made? Where has it been sold? What's happening in Asia with it? What's happening in this facility with it, et cetera? So you can really get uh, easy and simple control over uh, uh, all of that. So with that, I'd like to uh, invite Gavin back up to give us a demonstration of some of these facilities. Gavin? Hey, Paul. So we talk a lot about uh, global and what does that actually mean and what does it look like in NetSuite. Uh, we talk a lot about location relevance. You know, the end goal of NetSuite here is that the, whoever makes your product and where it's made should be completely irrelevant to, to your, your business. You should have the same control over that process regardless of where it's being made and who it's being made by. So let's uh, take a look at the, the video. So we're starting off in the role here of a sales manager, uh, Alex, who and his favorite feature in NetSuite is Sweet Social, which is also one of my favorite features too. And uh, his sales rep, you can see here, sent him a, a quick message saying uh, the, the big, or, big opportunity in APAC, it looks like it might, it might close. Of course, being a good manager, I told him, yeah, don't worry about it, we'll figure it out. Um, but then I used this to also then go and uh, quickly message the CEO and, uh, and say, um, you know that order that we talked about in, in, uh, in Australia? Well, I might need some, some help. So fortunately, we have a very, uh, very proactive and uh, uh, CEO in this company. So I'm going to send him a quick message. And uh, so we're just going to have a look at the, what, he, what he sees when he looks at his business. So in, on his dashboard, he has, right at the top, he has his uh, subsidiary navigator. So you can see everywhere where he is, uh, is operating, he has all of his metrics that help him run the business uh, on his dashboard as well. But what he's gonna do is he's gonna say, okay, well, let's go have a look and see what business, what, how much business we have in, uh, in APAC right now. And there's not a lot. And he's known for a while that he's probably gonna to have to have, uh, open up a, an Australia subsidiary at some point. So, uh, he's actually going to go and he's going to create his, uh, a new subsidiary because you know, we have this, this big order coming in, let's go and create a new company. So this is as easy as to go and add a new business to your uh, uh, in, in NetSuite, add a new subsidiary in, in NetSuite. You go to your subsidiary list, you say I want to go and create a new subsidiary. You go, got to go and give it a name, you choose uh, whereabouts in the uh, subsidiary hierarchy you want to go and place this new company that you're creating. We're creatively calling it NUCO, just, uh, just a little bit of creativity there. Um, as soon as you go and pick the, the, the country, Australia, you'll notice on the right-hand side, we're going to go and pick the Australian fiscal calendar. But more importantly, if you look at the edition, it shows that we already have a pre-configured edition of NetSuite for Australia. And so that's as, as easy as it is to go and, and uh, create your, your subsidiary. Of course, there's other information you can go and set uh, for it. In this case, you can go and and uh, choose uh, the language that you want to go and, go and have as the default language for that subsidiary as well, if you want to. Um, but we're basically going to go and create a new company, uh, hit save, and that's as, as, as much information as you have to provide at that point. So uh, now our CEO and, and our, our buyer have been, uh, been talking about this, uh, the, the prospect of uh, opening up a new business in Australia for a while now. 
So we're now looking at the procurement da dashboard. Again, he has all the information here about the inbound orders and vendor performance, et cetera. This could also be driven by a subsidiary if you, if you wanted to have it done that way, that way as well. But this company is using our, uh, our DRP functionality, and this is our multi-location planning. And so you can go and see that in that distribution network, uh, I already have uh, Australia set up as, being, as, as part of that. So I can simply go and, uh, and modify the bill of distribution. Um, so because currently what we have is we, we do ship some product to, to APAC, um, but we supply it out of the San Francisco location. So I'm just gonna quickly go and change that and say, okay, let's go and start supplying that out of our new contract manufacturer location uh, that's, that's uh, located, now located in, in Asia. And so that quick change, next time you go and run the planning engine, it's gonna go and source the materials from, uh, from your contract manufacturer instead. That's how we handle uh, contract manufacturers, et cetera, and we particularly set them up as locations. And if you go and look at the end of the item, you can see, again, there's all, all the components, there's the routing, so again, whether it's being made here or being made overseas, you can easily go and set that up. But let's go and have a look at the inventory, and again, global view of your, of your item, you can go and see, regardless of where you are in the world, you can see exactly how many you have on hand at any point in any location worldwide. And that's a quick example of, uh, of how you might use NetSuite in a global, a, a global supply chain and a global environment. Of course, you could be doing the manufacturing. Uh, all this functionality is available, whether you're doing manufacturing, shipping, or whether it's your controller that's going and viewing it as well. And I think with that, I'm going to pass on to Ranga Bodla again, who has a customer panel coming up. Ranga? So I'd like to divide up uh, three customers, which I think really represent really kind of global. And, uh, Brian Bishop of Acoustica, Rodney McKay of uh, Shaw Carpets, and uh, Ed McMahon of Epic. Come join me, guys. All right, guys, well, um, Brian, why don't we start with you? Can you just talk a little bit about uh, your company and what you guys do? Absolutely, so I'm Brian Bishop, Director of Supply Chain with Acoustica and implementer of NetSuite. Um, our company makes little tiny microphones. Um, we go into um, laptops, tablets, uh, remote controls, handheld uh, phones. So basically you're probably sitting with our technology right now in your pocket, in your laptop bag, and more than likely at home. Um, we make um, our microphones with MEMS technology, and uh, we use the uh, basic semiconductor supply chain, if anybody knows that. Um, we use the same exact process as you manufacture electronics. Roddy? Shell is a complete flooring manufacturer, uh, including being the world's largest carpet manufacturer. We also are a leading provider in all hard surface products, including wood, uh, ceramic and tile, and luxury vinyl tile. And Ed, what about yourselves? Yeah, Epic Engineer Technologies, we're a hybrid manufacturer of custom build to print electronics, things like battery packs, um, high reliability smart interfaces for the medical, um, aerospace, and industrial applications. Three very different companies, three very different types of businesses. You know, Ed, maybe you could start just how, how do you leverage NetSuite to manage being a, a global company? What, is it, what does global mean for you guys? Well, as you know, we, uh, we're a hybrid manufacturer, so we manufacture not only in our domestic manufacturing locations, but in over 30 factories all across the world. So having NetSuite has allowed us to manage our supply chain, and every one of our locations has one of our employees and a NetSuite seat in it. So we're able to not only have real-time information from all across the globe, um, but it's also very easy to scale because all we need is a laptop and we're up and running no matter where our manufacturer is in the world. And Ed, you guys are thousands of employees, right? Uh, I, I wish. I wish. We're only 150. Uh, Roddy, what about you guys? Uh, we started using NetSuite about four years ago. We had a, uh, a corporate announcement of global expansion and historically we'd been pretty much a North America company. We exported some but very little. Uh, we needed a new solution because our systems would not support the multi-currencies and languages that we were going to be going into. We started by building a plan in Nantong, China, and we chose NetSuite for a lot of reasons, but the big reason was it would support us anywhere we went, and we wouldn't have to add people or software or hardware in those countries as we expanded our uh, business. 
And you guys are actually manufacturing in that Chinese brand. We are. We, we're manufacturing carpet tile products similar to what you see on the floor, and all that product is distributed throughout uh, Asia Pacific. And Brian, what about you guys? Okay, so we have uh, two global challenges. Um, our first global challenge is that um, we're headquartered in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but we build our microphones in Europe and Asia, so we start the process in Europe and Asia. We do the assembly, the final test, and we store the microphones in Asia, and we ship the microphones from Asia. So, if we're doing our jobs right, which we usually do, 99.9% .9 of our material does not touch U.S. soil. The second challenge is we don't own the factories we produce in. The subsidiary is, com we're a fabulous company, it's called. So our, our factories are not owned by us, but we own the inventory from first raw material purchase through the entire supply chain which means our books have to be updated as material moves around the world, what's in the air, what's on the ground, what's on hold, what's at the factories, our books have to be updated. So we in 2014 embarked on, we came as a QuickBooks company. Um, we synced our inventory as often as we could, as often as finance could stand talking to me. Um, we implemented NetSuite in 2014, and using Del Bumi, we integrate automatically with all of our factories. So we run 30 data jobs a night integrating our factories with NetSuite. Um, transactions come in, so we're not just bringing in data, we're actually bringing in work orders, assembly builds, inventory transfers, uh, we capture yield loss automatically, and we do fulfillment. So we have automated the supply chain from first raw material purchase, against the purchase order, all the way through the end fulfillment. Uh, while I sleep, the supply chain updates, I come in, I click on the graphs, I see what the factories did, I know what the problems are for the day. So while you're, while you're having your coffee and your kids are screaming at you, you're able to, to monitor how Yeah, I come to work pretty tired, so I need that all updated. Once I drop the kids off at school, I've about had it for the day already, so I need the data to be there for me on dashboards. <laughs> um, and Ed, just to, you know, kind of to, 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 to summarize and where you guys are going next as a company, I mean, what's next for Epic? How is, you know, what do you see as the future for you guys? Uh, well, global expansion. We just opened our first office in Europe, actually in Wales, and with the One World application, we'll be implementing that. And we'll be up and running in literally two weeks because we don't have to worry about developing a whole new system. It can be used, and the currency issues with, you know, going from strictly dealing in just dollars to euros and pounds, it made it very easy to start our, our, our operation over there. And, and that expansion being in Europe being the same size, actually a larger market than the U.S., we're looking, at, we're looking forward to getting to growing there. What about yourselves, Roddy? What's, uh, what's next for Shaw and are you guys uh, yeah, we have, other countries? Yeah, uh, we've expanded throughout Asia, South America, uh, Australia, and next on our radar is Europe, and we're starting to make plans for the move into Europe. And that's what I assume is yep. part of that, those plans. And Brian, for, for you guys, what's, uh, what's next for Acoustica? Um, right now we're, um, well, from a software perspective, right now we're implementing PLM, we're implementing Autodesk and uh, continue to expand the global supply chain. I expect to be in um, more new warehouses, um, get more second, third source supply partners, and just continue to expand our Del Bumi uh, data um, automation and integration with our suppliers. Awesome, well thank you all for, uh, for joining us today. Thank you. Paul, back to you. was outstanding, a great sort of uh, example of how people are using the platform, the product, the capability to be able to nimble and grow and, and, and really add value to their business and, and be exceptionally competitive. That, that was really outstanding. So the, uh, the next pillar is I, I want to talk about is customer experience management. You know, a lot of this is based around, uh, uh, around commerce, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, the customer is king. And uh, utilizing Nets, we want to make sure that our, our, our companies are able, able to put the customer at the center of their business and provide them the, the type of experience that's going to uh, have that customer coming back for repeat orders because they know while dealing with, uh, uh, with yourselves, they're going to get the, 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 best type of, the best type of service and it's going to deliver what's needed. But as technology has evolved and the touch points with customers have evolved, it's become more and more difficult for companies to ensure they're providing that, uh, that type of experience. So, you know, a lot of times people have thought, well, you know, if I, if I want to give a better experience to the customer, you know, I'll just put a commerce engine on the front of, uh, in front of my application, and lots of people have done that. But that's just another way for the customer to engage with you. It might be another a way that you can annoy the customer as well if you don't do it correctly. You know, and as time is going on, people are finding it, as I said, more and more important 
that no matter how that customer engages with us, they get that same experience, whether that they're buying from a store, if we have a storefront, whether they're calling a sales rep, whether they're ordering something over the web, whether they've called a call center to replace an order, or whether they're entering something on a mobile device. You don't want to give them that different experience. I think everyone here has experienced, you know, I think what Jim talked about uh, uh, yesterday, that you go to a store to get something and they don't have it. And it's at price X, you come home, you go to order on the, the web and it's a different price, but you want the thing, then you, uh, then you uh, uh, buy it. And uh, the next day you get a promotion through the mail saying you can get 20% off if you buy this product. And it's like, oh my goodness, you know, what are you doing to me as a, as a customer? And really what you want to make sure is that that whole experience is coordinated so the customer is delighted to be engaged with you and that you're giving them that, that, that type of uh, opportunity. And when it comes down to the B2B world, it can mean a number of things. One, giving them that unique experience they would have if they were sitting in front of a sales rep, where the sales rep is only thinking about that customer engagement. And when they come in to engage with your work commerce, they're getting that same unique experience. Um, the, uh, uh, so we're, we're doing a lot of things to help uh, improve that with our B2B capabilities that we've been adding into our, our commerce engine. So it enables you, our customers, to get closer to your, uh, uh, to your customers and give them that unified experience. So when they order something from you, whether it be the salesperson or over the web, they're getting exactly the same pricing. And if a customer wants to engage with you over the web, they have the ability to be able to negotiate and get a discount the same way they would if they were dealing with a, with a salesperson. So recently we've had a whole number of capabilities to sweet commerce to support the B2B processing, multi-channel purchasing support, uh, requests for quote, Google Tag Manager password protecting the site so that customers need to authenticate to get to see the pricing because it's unique for them rather than throwing it open to the world until they actually place the order, being able to cancel the order, alternative payments, all those types of things that a customer would do in the other channels we want to bring to them in the commerce channel as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a, uh, a very quick uh, demonstration. I'm going to invite Gavin back up to show you some of these new facilities. Gavin? So, yes, yeah, so as Paul mentioned, it's a quick demonstration of you know, how you might do like an RFQ process in, in NetSuite. So let's run the, run the video. Okay. So... So what we have here is that this, this could be your, your, your NetSuite website. There's a request for quote link on there. And you can quickly go and, uh, and search for the item that you might want to go and, uh, and request a quote for. So you can go into the, into the box, go and choose what type of products you want. So of course, we're looking for uh, Apple products today. Um, and so we can go and pick uh, MacBook. Notice that I enforced the minimum order quantity as well of 100. So those rules apply. Uh, not just within NetSuite in the UI, but also out onto the web as well. And then you can go and enter a comment saying that you need this uh, ASAP. You can then go and submit that request. It gives you a quick uh, thank you reference. Um, and then you can go and see your actual quote and get an, an estimate. So there's your summary of your quote number, your requested date. There's an expiration date on there as well. You can make sure that, that's, uh, that that's, that can be enforced. Other contact information that you might, you might need if you need to go and follow up on, on your order. Uh, within NetSuite, then that comes in as uh, a new, new quote, a request for quote. Uh, the stage or the status can easily be changed from uh, pr proposed to approved. Um, this is a frequent customer, so we're going to give them a 20% discount. I would never give them a 20% discount, Jim, unless they ask, just so you know. Um, we're going to ship it by next to air, which amazingly only costs thirty-two dollars and fifty cents for hundred laptops, which I think is a great deal. We also have a, a good relationship with uh, with UPS. Um, and then there's your summary. So back in the website, of course, whoever requested the quote in the first place, we've notified that uh, there's their discount and their their very inexpensive shipping uh, charge. They can choose the uh, payment method. So it could be a corporate credit credit card. Of course, it could be uh, billed after. Just verify your shipping address, uh, place the order, and uh, in two minutes or less, there's your RFQ process. So, Ranga, is it you? Mr. Bodley, back to you. I'd like to introduce up uh, Sridhar Shah from MES to talk, as a great example of, uh, of this new customer experience management. Ranga? 
Freezer, thank you. Thank you. Um, can you tell, tell us a little about uh, yourself and, uh, and MES? Sure. Um, I'm the CIO and VP of marketing um, for a distributor of firefighting equipment. We're the largest distributor of firefighting equipment and servicing of that equipment in the country. And we transact locally in about 45 states coast to coast. And now you recently went live on NetSuite as well as Commerce and, and a number of things. Before, you guys were, were on a different ERP platform. What, that, originally, you were looking for Commerce, right? Correct. We started our journey looking for an e-commerce platform. And we started looking at NetSuite and we start, started looking at other um, platforms out there. We realized there's an opportunity to be had by going on a unified approach, by being on the same platform for e-commerce and our ERP system and kind of streamline all of our backend systems, as well as reorganize the business around the new capabilities that we're able to leverage with NetSuite. And so how are you guys using NetSuite now and, and commerce and leveraging that to really transform your customer experience? So the key you know, deliverable here is to give the customer a smoother experience. And what we've done is we've created personalized microsites for the customers where we're able to give them a catalog of goods that are specific to that customer, pricing specific to the customer with custom options that they could pick. And they could transact anytime they want by themselves without having to call a sales rep. And it frees our sales reps up. Instead of putting orders into the system, they spend more time face to face with the customers and visiting new prospects and growing the business. And how many of these microsites have you guys gotten live up to this point? Up to this point, we have 100 microsites on uh, NetSuite. And our plan is by the end of the year to have about 300 sites. And we could turn around a site in about a half a day to three days, depending on the complexity and size of the website. And how are you using these microsites to really build the relationship with your customer as well? Is it, it, can, can anyone get a microsite? Um, what we do is we ask the customer for a commitment. So they'll commit to a certain volume for the year. And then we'll go ahead and build out a microsite for them. We'll interview the customer to find out what they want and tailor the look and feel of the site to be you know, similar to the department logo and colors. And once they start using that website, it's hard for them to migrate to another platform. They get used to it. They like the convenience of it. And it just gives us another additional offer or feature that we can give to the customer that makes them want to stay with us. Makes sense. Uh, anything else you want to add? Just what's, what's next for MES? I think. Um, our, to continue growing, I think, uh, continue growing the microsite offering. Um, we're looking at Gen 2 of seeing what other features we could add to the microsites and also enhancing our customer center and using our B2C website to allow customers to review order histories and kind of open that up. So that's the next phase of our rollout. Perfect. Thank you, Srila. No problem. Thank you. Paul, back to you. Thank you, Ronga. A great example of what a, a unified customer experience really means. Um, so uh, finally, the, the, the final pillar that uh, we want to discuss is, is really you know, supporting the business models of the future. We're seeing a huge change in uh, what's happening in the marketplace today uh, with, the, uh, with the type of things that are, that are happening in the product world. And you know, with the introduction of IoT and other technologies, product companies are able to keep closer to the products that they have after they ship them and really look at new opportunities. And if you don't have a platform or an application that can support those uh, opportunities, then you're going to be at a real disadvantage. I always just think of the iPhone. You know, when the iPhone was created, it was a, it was a transactional billing uh, uh, solution. You basically, they made the product, they shipped it, and it was a simple you know, uh, traditional method. But at the same time, the App Store started up. And the App Store, people initially bought the applications, and they started being given away for free. Then they started charging for usage or transactions. I'm sure everyone here has got an eight-year-old child that's run up a $3,000 bill when they've gone to Jamaica or somewhere with, the, with, with their application. But the growth of that model was allowed, they needed a business system to be able to so support that, or they would have never been able to monetize that, uh, that idea. And every idea needs a way to monetize it. It's no use in being, thinking it's something great, but then not being able to uh, uh, recognize the revenue or bill for that particular item. And again, NetSuite wants to make sure that we are providing everything you need to be in order to be a, a productive and thriving business in the future. So uh, what's coming next? Well, we know there's lots of disruption in many, many industries. NetSuite is the, probably the leader in having businesses that have disrupted their industries. Many, many companies who are disrupting uh, their industries are running 
on the NetSuite application, people like GoPro are disrupting the camera industry, et cetera. And as I said, IoT is something which is absolutely disrupting the product industry. Rather than just shipping the product and recognizing, you'll be able to keep track of it, and all of a sudden you'll be able to look at the usage, you'll be able to maybe start charging subscriptions, you'll be able to do a lot more things in being able to monetize and add value to your customers. So there is this huge opportunity out there that we're gonna to have to make sure that we are uh, enabling uh, application features that'll let you, uh, that'll let you uh, manage that. So we announced yesterday the, the platform that's gonna help do that, you know, so that's gonna enable you to say, you know, build something, how do I bill for it? What do I do? And there are three types of billing. There's transactional billing, that is what most product companies to, do today. There's subscription billing and there's usage billing. And as time goes on with our product companies, we're gonna see all of those billing methods come together. Where are we gonna do all of these things? I might even be shipping the product for free in the future. So I'll ship the product for free and then I'll just start charging for it on a usage basis. Or you can subscribe to it and rent, uh, rent that particular product. So all of these methods are coming through and you wanna make sure that you as a company are gonna remain viable by having the tools and technologies that are gonna enable you to, uh, uh, to do that. And our answer to that is our suite billing module, which brings all of those particular uh, capabilities together. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring Gavin up one final time to take us through suite billing. Gavin. So this is actually an example that uh, I demoed a couple of years ago to, uh, to a prospect and, um, and we were talking about suite billing. I was like, you know, what, is, what does billing have to do with, with a manufacturing company? Um, but let's run the video and we'll walk through the, the example. This is a company that, um, whoops, that's not the right video. <laughs> there we go. Um, so this is a company that, that manufactured water filters and then they invoiced uh, their, their customers in a kind of an interesting way. So let's have a look at the example. So we're in the role here, real manufacturing company, um, but when they enter an order, they enter an order in a in slightly different way. Um, yes, they have the actual filter that they sell, the device or the, the, the machine that they, the, that they sell, um, but they don't charge for it. What they do is they, uh, they have a, a rental fee that they charge, so they, they make the device, uh, they, they charge their customers a monthly, a monthly fee, you can see that they set up a billing schedule that they, they're billed uh, annually, uh, or monthly, but over a, over a period of a year. Um, and then there's also the filter that they send along with it as well. So they charge for the filter. Um, and then there is the, the billing schedule that's automatically being, being created in, in, in NetSuite too. So you have your sales order, um, and of course you might go in then uh, and, and ship your, your product, et cetera. But one of the other things that they, they do, so here's your, your invoice for this as well. You can see there's the invoice for the actual product. It goes and calculates how much the, the monthly charge should be uh, that's going with it as well. So there's your water filter. There's, your, uh, there's your, your rent as well that's been, that's been broken down and it's doing the revenue recognition automatically as well. So just by tying those two things together then you're already a, a step ahead. But the third thing they do is this company actually charges their customers based on the number of gallons of, of water that they process uh, in, in, a, in a month. And so using an IoT type concept, they're actually, the, the device would actually send back information to them about how much water was processed. It's also checking thing like, things like chlorine levels. Um, and then what they can do is they can set parameters in there to say that if the levels get to a certain point, then they might have to go and send them a new filter or maybe they could warn the customer that the levels are at a certain, a certain point and feed that information back to them as well. So we gather all that information uh, tied back to the serial number of the, of the device and, and the filter and the, that's been supplied as well. We can then go and do a billing run and this is going to go and pick up all that additional usage information and it's going to go and, uh, and then create an additional invoice. This looks like very much like the traditional invoice that you've seen up to date, uh, up to now in NetSuite, there's your filtration charge, there's the, the total quantity of water that you're billing for, they, they bill at 75 cents per gallon. Um, but of course, with the new uh, advanced, with the new suite billing functionality, you might get a much prettier looking invoice like this that has everything in one place to go and, to go and send to your customer. Again, just extending that customer experience out uh, to, to them as well. And that's it. Paul, Oranga. Thank you, Gavin. Yeah, for the last, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Yorit. 
uh, to come up and join me to talk a little bit about uh, cardio. Thank you, Ray. Jordan, thank you for joining us. You're Can welcome. you just uh, introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about cardio? Sure. My uh, name is Jorik Kelderman. I'm the CFO of uh, Cardio. We're a San Francisco-based health monitoring company, and we have offices also around the world, so that's why we're on NetSuite One World. And basically, we're trying to make it easier for pe people to track their heart health, both for the patients and the doctors. That's what we're trying to do. Why don't we see a video and see what uh, little, Let's little do that. description of it. This is one of the, uh, the products that we have. This is a blood pressure monitor, which everybody can just carry around very easily. You operate it with a mobile phone, as you saw on the video. We also have a, a, a scale that works with the same app, and we also have a continuous EKG monitor. And it's all about empowering the patients to see the data, but also very much about empowering your doctor to see the data and to make it easier for them to track the health of a lot of people at the same time. And so is this product out today? It's shipping? It's Absolutely, yeah. You can buy it on our uh, website, on Amazon. We're in Target, Best Buy, in the Apple Store. Uh, so it's all out there. And you talked about, you said it's about keeping everyone informed about your health and people keeping connected. Talk, talk a little bit about that. How is that, how is it keeping your doctor informed about your health? Sure, sure. So we see, obviously, that a lot of people want to, want to track their health a lot more themselves, which I think is a great movement for everybody. Um, and it's obviously sometimes it's difficult for the doctors to deal with all the data that's coming around there. And that's actually why we launched last week at the American Hypertension Society in New York. We launched a platform called Arcardio MD which basically unlocks the data from all other of our devices and makes it easier in a smart dashboard for the doctor to monitor the health of a lot of patients at the same time. So it's not only about making it available to the patients, which is already great, but it's also about the doctors. And so today, is it, uh, how, do you, how do you bill for it? How do you sell it? How do you get revenue today? Sure, yeah. So we uh, sell the device, and with the device currently, uh, the people can download the app on the App Store for free, and the data gets stored safely in the cloud as well. People can access the data from everywhere. Obviously, with suite billing, it's one of the reasons why we chose NetSuite, is that we want to be prepared also towards the future for other revenue models and maybe a subscription billing or a rental of the devices. That's one of the reasons why we chose NetSuite. So today, it's just... I buy the product, I get it, I get, I'm able to access the app for free. Correct. But eventually there may be, there may be other ways, you may charge the doctors, you may charge the, the patients. Correct. All kinds of options. And, and although we're not a huge company yet, one of the key reasons was as well to choose NetSuite One World is that we're already in so many different locations. We sell in more than 40 countries. We're dealing with everything around the tax in the different countries. So that was one of the other reasons why Great. we chose NetSuite. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It was You're a great welcome. example of, uh, I think, what we're, we're seeing, the, the new future of new business models. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Jim? Thank you. All right. So I think you've seen a lot today. You've seen a lot of new functionality. You've seen the breadth of the product. In fact, this industry, wholesale distribution manufacturers, they use more of the suite than any other industry we've got. There's a, it's the highest penetration of CRM that we have. It's a high penetration of e-commerce and web stores, and I think you can see why. And now, with all this incremental global functionality we're adding, as well as this really, really deep supply chain, I think a lot of you saw some stuff today that you may not have seen before, and we'll have other deeper dive sessions on it. So anyway, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. We really appreciate it, and uh, let's all grow together. Thanks a lot. Bye.